Hank Hill, Peter Griffin, and Homer Simpson, a Fox trio of fathers with very different ways of handling business. But our first two heroes proved that their skills carry over into the Commonwealth fairly well, which brings me to today's question. Can you beat Fallout 4 as Homer Simpson? The rules for this run were simple. I could only use the 2076 World Series bat because otherwise this run would be too similar to Peter Griffin's, and I can't use stib packs or rat away. I'm only allowed to use doctors to heal my rads, and food is only allowed to be used to heal health. With that out of the way, let's get into the run. First things first, we create the ideal family man stricken with a severe case of jaundice. And before you guys rip me to shreds for not making a lore accurate Homer Simpson, trust me, I tried. I tried so hard, but to my surprise, there are more Homer Simpson mods for God of War than Fallout 4. Next I set the stats, and for this run, Homer is a melee only character, so I focused on a 9 in strength, mainly for rooted and more damage, a 1 in perception, and 2 in endurance but those get changed very early on. A 1 in Charisma and Intelligence, a 9 in Agility as cartoon characters have the ability to defy their physical appearance and perform great feats of finesse, and a 5 in Luck for Idiot Savant. This build requires way more perk points than I could start with, so bear with me. But now, I could officially begin the run, sort of. So the first thing Homer did was try to read a baby book and gained a level in Endurance, and then he proceeded to loot whatever he could in Sanctuary. Now, without the slightest clue as to what to do, he began to hike and stumbled across a police station. Those places offer help and donuts, or so he thought. The damn place was overrun by ghouls and appeared to be run by people who forgot Halloween was over, but even with Homer trying to help them out, the main guy just kept yelling at him. No quest completion and no assistance, so Homer decided to leave and try somewhere else. He continued until he arrived at Diamond City. The nice ogre outside opened the gates for him and he finally found a safe place to figure out what was actually going on. He found Dr. Nick to heal his rads and health and got a ton of leads for quests. But maybe he could stop off for a drink first. He figured he had at least earned that. Another duff, Homer? Nah, it's Friday night, Mo. I want to try something special. Ah, uh, sure, sure. Alright, here you go. Red Tick Beer. Cold? Refreshing? And something I can't quite put my finger on. I'm drunk! Da 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 Yeah, maybe drinking here is a little too scary for now. After recovering from a non-canonical ending, Homer realized he would need a weapon to defend himself, and so he headed to Jamaica Plains, which supposedly housed an old world relic he would be most familiar with. However, it was guarded by the fiercest of locked doors, and Homer couldn't defeat it. Not yet, at least. So off he went to do odd jobs. On his travels, he came across a talking refrigerator, but where he thought he had struck gold, it was only a kid inside. Not even a sandwich or a duff beer for his troubles. But now, being in the company of a kid and feeling obligated to see him home, Homer escorted Billy to his parents. But then Bullet and the Gunners showed up to take hostages. Normally, this is where the hero pulls out the big gun, but Homer tried to talk with them. Or what? You release the dogs or the bees? Do your worst! Now to make a long story very short, the Peabodies did eventually win the fight against the Gunners while Homer stood as a distraction, but this was about 30 minutes of waiting for everyone to stop shooting. With a job well done, if you can call it that, Homer returned to the pretty homunculus in Diamond City and answered some questions for her. The three little sentences that will get you through life. Number one, cover for me. Number two, oh, good idea, boss. Number three, it was like that when I got here. Oh, and then somehow got involved rescuing babies for the local wildlife. Hello, my animal friend. Peace be with you. Maybe he should have left that one alone. But after enough running around, Homer finally had the skills to take on Jamaica Plain. 
Except the residents weren't keen on newcomers. <laughs> and on top of that, Homer learned that maybe some things are just out of reach without the proper clearance. Long story short, Homer had to grab a key card to gain access inside. To do that, he needed a miracle and stopped at the only place capable of handing those out. And luck behold, he got what he needed. Returning to claim his weapon, Homer had to run past the robot security to get a hold of the bat. But fighting the security wasn't an option yet, he was still a little rusty. Being frozen for 200 years really takes a toll on your joints. So Homer returned to Diamond City to add a little something something to his bat, because from here on out, things would get very messy. Homer got tasked with going and tracking down a detective, but to get him, he had to fight through some triggermen. At the beginning of the vault, Homer had to run up and fight at close quarters, which isn't great due to how little range the bat has. But with a level up, he got blitz. I can see why you guys have recommended this so many times, as this turns Homer into a teleporting samurai. Nani? After saving Nick, it was time to make their escape. At this point, fighting multiple trigger men were tough if they didn't go down in one shot, or if Vats really wanted to take its time on a kill. Between Rooted, I had a bit of damage resistance, but for a low endurance, health was always a worry. But surprisingly, with all the food lying around and the fact that the trigger men carried around a family sized meal in their pockets, Homer could get shot, hit a home run, and then eat his fill. Arriving at Skinny Malone, Homer tried to defuse the situation, but things took a turn for the worse. Should have left that alone, Nikki. This ain't the old neighborhood. In this vault, I'm king of the castle, you hear me? And I ain't letting some private dick shut us down now that I finally got a good thing going. I told you we should have just killed him! But then you had to get all sentimental. You tried your best, and you failed miserably. The lesson is, never try. With Skinny taken care of and Nick rescued, it was time to go over what Homer didn't know. Alright Homer, we want you to recreate your every move the night you saw this alien. Well, the evening began at the Gentleman's Club, where we were discussing Wittgenstein over a game of backgammon. Mr. Simpson, it's a felony to lie to the FBI. We were sitting in Barney's car eating packets of mustard, you happy? Seeing an opportunity here, Nick let Homer know of some big bad assassin out in the Commonwealth that needed dealing with. So, cue a long hike and bam, Fort Hagen. Homer immediately got to work tearing apart synths, but for about as fast as they went down, Homer went down just as quick. It was clear he wouldn't be able to fight everyone, especially not if they were melee. Hands down from here on out, this is the most intense fight of the run. Making it to Kellogg, our hero had some choice words. I'll have you know I wandered off from the tour. Well, at least you like the food. Oh, I like food all right. I like pizza. I like bagels. I like hot dogs with mustard and beans. I get the picture. I'll and then proceeded to nothing personal kid the synth backups in the room. Kellogg was a very different story because someone wanted to play hide and seek with alien technology. But once the stealth boy wore off, Kellogg's fate was sealed. Homer stripped the body clean and ran over to Dr. Amari to ask what the heck was going on, and soon he was diving through the memories of a madman. After that traumatic experience, Homer needed a drink. He walked over to the Rexford Hotel, and while talking about where to find a drink, Homer was asked if he wanted to go find a machine that could make cold drinks, ones he didn't have to pay for, and ones that have a much higher quality than what he can locally get. Mmm, beer. Making his way to the machine, he had to deal with the raiders hoarding the cold drinks for themselves, but eventually he came face to face with the drinking buddy, a bipedal robot capable of telling jokes and brewing brews. What a saint. Hey, where have you been all my life? The original mission was to recover the drinking buddy for the hotel and good neighbor, but what was the Russian hurrying it back? What was wrong with it hanging out in Sanctuary for a while? While exploring, Homer found himself in a high school surrounded by ghouls, but once he ran outside, he came face to face with a janitor that had seen better days. Damn Scots! 
They ruined Scotland! Now, up until this point, Homer had seen more horrors than a night out in Florida, and with a new buddy to brew cold beer, something else was missing. An old world delicacy. Donuts. After getting a lead and diving through the destroyed headquarters of a donut factory, Homer came across the plans and supplies to start up his own franchise. But upon returning to Sanctuary, it was clear he didn't know what he was doing and lacked the materials to make his dream come true. So instead, he went to follow up on Dr. Amari's request to find a scientist in the glowing sea, because she asked nicely. Although with years of working at a nuclear power plant, you'd think Homer had some sort of resistance to the radiation. Be that as he may, our hero couldn't make the trek without succumbing to ghoulification. So on a second attempt, he made sure to wear a hazmat suit. He eventually met with Virgil and was now tasked with going and getting the brain chip of a courser. I mean, yeah, that seems simple enough. But the real thing keeping Homer going was Virgil said if he did this, he could get him the manpower to build the donut shop. Say less. Between Homer being a teleporting batsman and the gunners not being able to gun, making it to the courser wasn't an issue, and the courser barely got a chance to do anything at all. With the chip in hand, it was time to decipher it, and luckily finding the people to do so was pretty easy. And for a password, it was just the name of the organization. That's like top of the list for not to use passwords. Meeting with the railroad was easy. They asked for the chip, decoded it, and then sent Homer on his way. He was literally just hopping from one person to the other. It was almost like he couldn't stray from the path and all of this was planned out over six years of development. Weird. But with the plans deciphered, it was time to get help building his shop. So Homer had been swindled. Virgil didn't have the manpower to help with the donut shop, but he pointed him to the people who could, the Minutemen. So Homer, hellbent on getting his donuts, fought through the raiders to get to the leaders. No one in. We don't uh, know what you're talking about, Homer. And you can't join the Stonecutters because it's too exclusive. Oh, well, that was a real nice secret organization we had once. And when it came to clearing out the town of Concord, the Brotherhood of Steel showed up to lay down the law. It's a shame they treated Homer so poorly the first time he met with them. With the Minutemen saved, Homer finally got to the donut shop, and holy shit, donuts healed for so much! Homer could eat something like 15 entire ears of corn to heal what just one donut could. That blew my mind. So to repay the Minutemen for helping put the shop together, Homer had to run some missions for them. But at least healing wasn't a huge issue anymore. Dealing with low healing and rads from normal food sources is nothing compared to a rad-free Boston cream donut. But by performing a good job, Homer became the general of the Minutemen. Woohoo! After performing some more tasks evicting raiders from life, it was time for the Minutemen to help Homer build a teleporter to go visit what they called the Institute, the real bad guys of the Commonwealth. Making it inside, Homer found a familiar face, although they had also been changed by the Commonwealth Wasteland. You stink! You are a senile, buck-toothed old mummy with bony girl arms, and you smell like an elephant's butt! That could have gone better. I mean, Homer would have been right at home here, but that was just too much. He was a changed man, and it was time to stand up for himself. The Institute had to be taken down. With a goal finally outlined, Homer went with the Minutemen to reclaim a stronghold they needed to begin a comeback, and at first it wasn't too bad. The place was crawling with mire lurks. Luckily, between vats and the upgraded bat, dealing with them wasn't an issue. That is until Mama showed up. I don't want to get mad, but I will! You didn't have to go down like this! Okay. So, come crawling back, eh? Seems like the classy thing to do would be not to call attention to it. So now, working for the Institute, Homer went through a meet and greet with his fellow employees, and honestly, this place was miles better than sleeping outside. Meeting back up with Mr. Burns, Homer got tasked with tracking down a missing employee that had taken a liking to the ways of the Commonwealth. So off he went to retrieve them and ran across the Brotherhood of Steel again. Yeah, maybe it's a good idea he didn't work with them. Homer had to rough up some raiders who were hellbent on protecting their new leader, but once Homer came face to face with Gabriel, the meeting went pretty smoothly. 
people die all the time, just like that. Why, you could wake up dead tomorrow. With a smash and grab under his belt, he immediately got assigned to another, but this time the target were four runaways. Mr. Burns called them property, which was a little concerning, but at the promise of being paid well and donuts, who could complain? Upon arriving at Bunker Hill, our hero got to work. And by work, I mean walking past all the people shooting at each other. This is surprisingly easy when you're oblivious as to what's actually happening around you. Inside, Homer spoke to the runaway property and put them to sleep. With two successful jobs back to back, Homer earned a promotion! Woohoo! Now that Homer had proved himself useful to the Institute, it was time to flex his old world experience. The Institute needed a super battery to power it for years to come, and luckily one such battery could be found in a reactor. Homer of course knew how those worked. Sort of. So teaming up with Dr. Fillmore, our duo charged headfirst into the Brotherhood occupied space. They must have disliked Miss Fillmore only because during an elevator ride, they lit her up with blaster fire. Sucks to be her, I guess. Continuing further down, Homer came face to face with the battery, and he treated it as an old world relic. But let's just say technology has really kicked up over the past 200 years. So donning a hazmat suit, Homer retrieved his prize and then had to fight his way past some robot security, but his bat by this point was dealing some pretty decent damage. Now proving an invaluable asset to the Institute, Homer got tasked with going and rescuing a scientist trapped in a house. One issue Homer knew all too well. However, he couldn't just brute force his way through this and had to actually convince the scientists to leave. A nuclear reactor is a lot like a woman. You just have to read the manual and press the right button. Yeah, the Institute had to call him back up for this one. Gaining another promotion somehow, Homer now had to start tying up loose ends. Apparently there were factions who didn't think donuts and cold beer were the bee's knees and Homer had to go sort them out. First up was the railroad, and I don't know how you stop a 241 pound man from teleporting between your operatives and sending them into the afterlife, but that was the railroad's issue to sort out, not mine. After a job well done, it was time to finalize the war on donuts. The Brotherhood with their angry spacesuit wearing degenerates who couldn't fly a vertebrate if their life depended on it needed to go. Homer got to work smashing shield generators because every middle-aged suburban father has a plus two to smashing electronics and soon his comrades teleported in to fight off the enemies. Homer was assigned to watch over a robot, upload a virus to another robot, and frankly this was pretty calm considering how many people were getting shot or turned into piles of ash. With the quest complete, Homer got to watch the greatest bonfire ever. One made from the dreams of Buzz Lightyear fans everywhere. But just take a second, just imagine how many marshmallows you could cook on that thing. Returning to his boss one last time, Mr. Burns spoke with our hero once more, and then the game ended. Homer had purged the pastry haters and secured his job for years to come. Finally, the Fox Dad Trio is finished. Rest in peace Peter Griffin as the YouTube overlords needed a sacrifice, but at least our favorite Springfield residents got to see the Commonwealth son and got to enjoy a donut for his troubles. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a ton. Plus, if you have a suggestion for a challenge run as you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. I play all sorts of games, so no challenges off the table. I want to thank all of you that watched to this point, and as always, I have been Chris from Crisis Gaming, and I will see you on the next one.